Today I will explain you what is slicing in Python. But before we will start, remember to subscribe our channel with the red button down there if you don't do it yet and to give us thumbs up and to leave us a comment. Let's start! everyone! As I mentioned a few seconds before, today we are going into more Python subject. We will be talking about slicing and indexing in Python. It's rather a beginner's uh, content, but I totally encourage you to check this out and find out everything what you might not know about slicing. We will be talking about different ways of using it and what will happen in different situations. So, let's start! So, let's start from what actually is slicing in Python. So, slicing in Python is a feature that enables accessing parts of sequences like strings, tuples and lists. You can also use slicing to modify or delete items of mutable sequences such as lists. Slicing can also be applied on the third-party objects like NumPy arrays, as well as pandas series and data frames. Slicing enables writing clean, concise and readable code. And before we'll go deeper into what is slicing, how it works, how we should use it, let's go through a very important concept which is indexing. If you were working with Python or any other programming language, you probably know how indexes work, but if not, it's really worth to understand it. You can access a single item of a Python sequence, such as string, tuple or list, with the corresponding integer indices. Indices in Python are zero-based. This means the index that corresponds to the first leftmost item of the sequence is zero. One to the second item, two to the third item, and so on. Let's take a look on the example, and here we have a string Python. So the first index of Python string is our first character, and its zero index is p. Index one is y, index 2 is t, and so on and so on. And the last index is n. So you can clearly see how indexes correspond to the each element of the string. Now let's take a look at the code example. On the screen you have three values. We have string, python is awesome, we have tuple with some numbers, and we have list with some numbers as well. And if we will take the zero index of the string, it will return us the first element, which is p. The fourth index of the string is o. So we can count it's p is one, y is two, t is three, oh, sorry, p is zero, y is one, t is two, h is three, o is four, so the fourth index is o. And in the tuple. In the tuple it's really similar. So the zero index is one, so it's the first element, and the fourth index is fifth element, so it's 16. And also in the list the zero element is one, which means it's the first element, and the fourth element is also 16, so it's fifth element. Also, in this code example, you can see that to get any value, we are providing indexes inside the brackets, just after the sequence we are getting to. So we want some value from. Negative indexes. Python provides the possibility to use the negative integer as index as well. This appears to be very useful in practice, especially when you want to access the last rightmost item of the sequence. 
and again here you can see so the minus one value is the last number minus two is the second last so in our example minus one is n minus two is o and so on and zero again is p and so on let's take a look at code example again and here we are taking the minus values so minus one will be the last character of our string so it's exclamation mark minus five will be s so we need to count five and then we can get it and it's also similar with tuples with lists you can try that what more we can update lists with indexes taking into consideration that if python strings and tuples are immutable that's why we can also only update lists and let's take a look how we can do it so you should see the code right now with the list and here we can take the last value of the list and assign it a new value and thanks to this operation when we will call the list again now you can see that instead of the last 128 right now we have 100 so it's changed you can try it also with different values and right now when you understand what our index is we can go through slicing so slicing is similar to indexing but returns a sequence of items instead of just the single items how indexing did it and for slicing we are using uh, also indexes zero based uh, but we are using more values there are two variants of the slicing syntax so the first one is sequence and syntax from index from start to stop and the other one is start stop step and let me explain you both of this when we are using syntax sequence start stop you will get the new sequence it will start with the item that has the index start it's included and will end before the item with the index stop so uh, the item with the index stop won't be inside in other words the statement sequence start stop returns the items sequence start sequence stop minus one and all the items between them so let's see the code example again and here we can see we can have the string tuple and list again so first let's go with the string our start is one so we are starting from the second character and our stop is five so we are going with second third fourth and fifth because our index 5 is n so it's not included with the tuple is the same we are starting on 2 so index 2 is 4 index 3 is 8 and index 4 is not included and a very interesting example we can have here on the 2 2 so we are starting on 2 and we are finishing on 2 so we don't return anything I hope that's pretty understandable now let me tell you about omitting start and stop when you omit start the first value is taken 0 which is resolving the sequence starting from the 0 index so the beginning let's take a look at the code example again so we have string we don't have the first value just we have the last one so we start from the zero index and finishing on the index one because two is not included and the same with tuple we are starting on the zero and we are going to third index to fourth index fourth is not included and right now what happens if we don't have the last element because happens the same but the stop point is the end of our element so in the string when we are starting from the index 2 and then we are starting from the third 
element and we are taking everything till the end. And the same is with tuple. We are starting from the index 4, so the fifth element, and we are going till the end. And what happens if we don't have any? Then we are taking the whole string because it's from the first one to the last one and the same with tuple. From the first one to the last one and the same with list. From the zero index to the last index. I hope that's understandable and that can be really really useful. Now let's take a look at the negative values because it's also possible to start or stop with negative indexes. And right now we can see the code example and what happens then. So when we put as our start the negative value, then we are just counting from the end of the element like the string. So we are taking from minus eight, so we are taking from a as it's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5, minus 6, minus 7, minus 8 is our A from awesome and we are going till the end as we don't have the stopping index there. The same with tuple. We want to take from the beginning to the minus 1, so to the last one and we are not including it. Cool. Right now let's understand what is start, stop, step. This syntax is really, really similar, but there's one more, more detail. This step is a value that we want to jump through. So, if the step is positive and we omit the start, the resulting sequence, again, start at the beginning of the original. If you omit the stop, the operation stops at the end of the origin. However, if we omit the step, it considered as one, and you get the same behavior as with the syntax start stop. But if we will put step two, for example, we will take every second value. Let's take a look at the code example right now. We also have string, tuple, list, and the first one. The start is one, the stop is five, and we jump by two. So the start, let's take it's two, then one, we are leaving this one, we don't want it because it's the step. And the next one is eight. And here we are stopping. Here, when we don't put the start, we are starting from the beginning, so from the zero, jumping by two and finish on six. Next one, we are starting from the third, we are going to the end, jumping by two. And here we are starting from the index first, finishing on index five and jumping by one. What we can do more? We can also use negative values as a step. And combination with a start greater than stop can be used to collect items backwards. That's pretty interesting actually. And in the case with negative step and omitted start, the resulting sequence start at the end of the original. And if you omit the stop, the operation stops at the beginning of the original. That's pretty confusing, but let's see the code example. So, here we have minus 1, index 4 and index 1. So our result is, we are going here, 16, 8, 4. Because we are not like uh, jumping by 2, just 1, so we take every. Next we have minus 2, 1, 6, so we are going from 64, 16 and 4. We are just jumping by 2. And here we have minus 1, 2 and 0, so we are starting from the beginning. 28, 128, 64, 32, 16, 8. And here we start from 5 and going minus 1. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 6, 10, 32. And 
Using slicing, we can get the shallow copy of the sequence with the items in the reserved order by omitting both start and stop. That's pretty cool. So we can, for example, copy our tuple, but reversed when we won't put start and stop and just put minus one as the step parameter. So it works on tuple and in list on our code example. We can also use slicing for replacing and deleting values. If we will use the start-stop sequence, it's possible to replace the part of the sequence with a smaller or a larger one. Following this logic, we can also delete parts of the mutable sequence by replacing them with empty sequence like empty tuple or empty list. Let's take a look at the code example. So, for example, here we can take from 1 to 5 and change it to 0, 0. Then the result will be that we have 0 on index 1 and on the in next index. And we won't have all these values from 1 to 5. We will just have two values there instead. Or we can delete. So let's take from index 1 to index 3 and assign it to the empty list and then we won't have these values anymore. Now let me just briefly tell you what are slices. So these slices are the instances of the Python built-in class slice. You create them with statement slice start stop step. It's possible to pass an instance of the slice instead of start stop step or start stop. Now let's take a look at the code example. We have tuple, we have list and we can create a slice with start stop step. So we can create a slice from our tuple by passing the S, which is defined here as a slice 152. And then we have as a result 28. In slices, we can also omit step and get the behavior of start stop. And if we will pass a single argument, slices use it is as a stop and behaves as nothing stop nothing besides that slices can be manipulated inside functions and methods so here we have another code example with not using the step parameter or not using the start and step parameter so let's summarize slices in python are very powerful and useful when we need to extract items from sequences like string tuples and lists also some third-party objects such as numpy arrays and pandas series and data frames we can use slices inside functions and methods i think this knowledge is very useful especially for beginners with python so i hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching and that's all Thanks for watching, I hope that you find this content useful and you understand slicing and you are able to use it in your Python projects. So if you liked it, remember about thumbs up and leaving us a comment. Besides that, remember about subscribing with the red button down there if you don't do it yet. And of course, turn on the notifications, because we are going to have more and more great content for you. Besides that, don't forget to check out our blog where you can find almost everything in a written form and some more, of course, and to check out our social media, which links you will find below in the description, so you can get some updates, news, nice promo codes and stuff like that. I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye!